Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday business chats. I'm Natasha Mitchell, owner of Inspire and Drive, and I'm here with Jennifer Kelly from Nimble Quotes and New Initiative Marketing. So hi, Jen, how are you today? Hi, Natasha, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Excellent, excellent. I'm really enjoying this uh, nice warm weather that we've had the last few days, but uh, haven't been getting out to enjoy, enjoy it quite enough. So uh, hope to do that in the next few days. Great. Yeah. So uh, today we're going to be talking about a topic that comes up quite often when I'm talking to particularly new business owners who are starting out, but it, it can be at any stage of business. And it's all about um, how to bundle their products and services together and um, whether they should just be selling one individual session at a time? Um, should they bundle packages and, and products together? Um, you know, what is it they should do? So today we're going to be having a bit of a, converse, a little conversation about the advantages of actually packaging up a program and what to do when your clients decide that they don't want to quite fit into your program. <laughs> And they want to do something that's a little off script for you. So we're going to be talking all about that. So um, so maybe I'll just start talking a little bit about the advantage of packaging up products and services. And again, as I mentioned, this is not only for small businesses or people starting out, but whenever you make a sale of a product and service to someone, there's a lead time that you need to go through to bring that client on board, to nurture them, to get them to like and trust you. And that, that, that is the long lead time. So when they're at the point that they're ready to buy something, if you're selling them just one session or one product at that time, that's a lot of effort for a very little, little sale. And sometimes what you'll find is that because you only sold them one session um, or, or a one-off, from their perspective, they didn't really get any transformation. Mm -hmm. The reality is, I know for me um, as a coaching, uh, as a consultant, is that Typically, a client needs at least five to six sessions uh, working with me so that I really get to understand their business so that I can really take a deep dive and so that they've got time to do the work that, that I set out for them to come back with questions and then we move on to the next piece. So um, certainly in my experience, packaging up that uh, products, those products and services into multiple session, one, for the amount of work that goes into selling the product in the first place, that's important. Two, the results for the client are better. And Jen, you know, you're going to tell an example shortly, but really um, there is a lot of work in even preparing for one session. So if you sell someone a one hour session, there's usually a lot of extra work before and after that. And it's really hard to sell the service at the price that you really need to cover for 10 hours of work um, for just a one hour session. So maybe you can uh, speak, speak to that a little bit more, Jen, and what yeah. your experience has been on that. Sure, sure. Um, but before I, I, I tell you the story of that too, I'm, I'm wondering, um, so a question for you. Uh, do you think it's the kind of thing that small business owners or any, any kind of business owner um, needs to go through the painful way before they understand this? And, and I just say that, I mean, it's a little bit of personal experience here. I mean, um, but for myself, uh, understanding the idea around packaging, logically, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But exactly how to get that going, how to execute it, how to choose what is in the package. Um, I know I had to go on the, the, the one-offs for, for a while until I figured out, you know, first of all, it's not working for me. It's not working for the client and what to do uh, to bring something into a package. So do you think uh, if a business owner is watching right now and, and is new to this concept, do you think it's the kind of thing where you, you really have to kind of go a little bit trial by fire in order to figure out what kind of program or package works for your business, for each, I guess, the business owner's business? 
Well, to be honest, I would like to fast track that process for people. So um, I think if you, for sure, if you're an, a solopreneur, you're doing this alone, you're not working with a consultant or a coach in the early stages of your business, sometimes that for sure will be a trial and error process. Mm -hmm. I think if you... Um, if you decide early on in your business that you are going to get some help right out of the gate, um, an experienced consultant or coach would always recommend that you sell a package or, or a bundle of products and services. And I think you touch on an interesting point, Jen, that you don't always know what should be in that, um, that package of services. And, and sometimes it's, sometimes it's, um, the reason people aren't packaging those bundles up front is a little bit of their own insecurity or fear about, oh, would someone pay me $2,000 versus $200, right? So sometimes in your mind, it might be easier to sell a $200 package, a $200 one-off session, and the client receiving that might think, oh, um, yes, I, I can afford a $200 one-off session with you, but, um, you know, that, that same client who's saying, I only want to spend $200 in their mind is usually expecting what is in a $2,000 package. So I feel like you really can set yourself up for um, failure, for difficult conversations with clients. Um, and, and, and frankly, you know, really just not, as I mentioned, not getting the results you want. So I think a lot of people will fall into that trap when they're just starting out, when they're doing it alone. I think if people have the luxury or opportunity to work with a more experienced coach or consultant early on in their business, they can be guided on how to create those packages, how to create packages that have a lot of value in them. Um, and not only have a lot of value in them, a lot of value to the clients, but also a lot of value for you as the person delivering that. And, you know, we could go very deep on packaging, but the, the ideal position to get in um, is to, and I'm talking about this a lot lately, is to try and do more while working less. So you can add a lot of value in a package that doesn't necessarily require hours and hours more of your time. In a package, you might be able to offer, you know, X number of one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. You might be able to offer them some training content that they can do on their own. You might be able to offer them access to some kind of group or community. You might be able to offer them some tools and templates. So all of those pieces together are now suddenly representing potentially 10 times the value you could offer in a one-off session, but it's incrementally 10 times more of your effort um, as you're delivering that. Oh, for sure. And I think also too, uh, sometimes when we're starting out, um, at least I guess it's for me, I'll tell my story. Uh, sometimes you feel like, you know, the client asks for X, so I'll deliver X. And then mm -hmm. it's, uh, I think it, it's only through time when you, you realize, you know, the client actually needs A, B, C, and D. And really the client doesn't want X, the client wants to get to some end result. Right. Um, I've heard this story or this analogy uh, be, be talked about and I just think it's amazing. Um, and it drives home the point that when, you, you're, you know, when you're selling a vacation, you're not selling the plane trip, right, to the destination. You're selling your destination, Hawaii or Barbados or wherever the, the, you know, the trip mm -hmm. actually ends up. The, the plane is just the vehicle to get there. And, and sometimes, and you'd never just sell the plane ride, right? But I think as, uh, as service consultants, sometimes we're asked just for the plane ride. And so we think, okay, well, we better just deliver the plane ride. So uh, I think one way to break out of that would be, okay, if you are selling one off, I mean, first of all, don't feel bad about it. We all have to start. And sure. Oh, no judgment is needed around that. So if it's a, you know, one hour consulting uh, call, well, what is the client looking to get out of it? It's not just talk to you for an hour. There's got to be some end result that they're looking for in their business. Um, and I, I think too, if, if you really think about, well, uh, back to, you know, selling the one off. So uh, early when I started my company, I, I was doing one off consulting uh, one hour at a time. But that one hour at a time really was 90 minutes of prep for that one hour meeting. And then it was about a half an hour to drive there. And then the, the half an hour drive home. And then, a, you know, a debrief for the next 
prep um, or the, the next session. So you're looking at there around roughly five hours for one, you know, one hour of billing. And it, it, you know, it dawned on me after a few of those <laughs> that uh, this isn't really working. So that's what I meant about the pain point, right? Like sometimes when we're starting new, we're so elated to get a customer that, you know, you almost would work for free, you yeah. know? So and you almost I'm, are working for free. When you're doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, um, yes, I, I think you touched on some good points and I do think as the experienced consultant in, and you know, you're a consultant on the marketing side, I'm a consultant on the, on the business strategy side and process, you know, I think it's your job as the experienced person in that discussion and in that equation to one, to make the right recommendation um, to, to really make it, I think the big thing in there is really making it outcome based. And as you get more experience having conversations with clients, you can you get better at asking the right kinds of questions you get better at asking them what kind of outcomes they want um you obviously get more experienced in um in delivering your services and knowing what what works so that sales conversation becomes much easier to make that recommendation and um uh, promote the value of those services uh, for for what what you are offering and I there's it's very been a very rare occasion um, except for when the client really wasn't a good fit where uh, you know I've recommended a five or six session session solution and I'm able to break down all of the outcomes that they're looking for and break down how each part of that solution fills that gap for them um, that a client has walked away being unhappy and you know, I'm sure you have the same experience. And um, this is not all always about charging premium, premium prices all the time, but typically the higher value the package is, the more value you're actually able to, um, to, give, to give to your client. So, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're doing your client a favor by recommending the right solution. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, I do think that comes with experience and, and the confidence to, you know, um, and, and, you know, really the phrase is, you know, are you really, uh, you know, a partner? Are you really a consultant? Or are you really an order taker? Right? Yeah. So um, being able to, sure, understand what the client wants. Um, sometimes it's w w what the client thinks they want. They're not aware of other ways to do what they're trying to get at the end of the day. Uh, and and just educating them on you know the many different ways to get to the end result that they're after is uh, is a really important thing. The the and the asking the questions and as well the educating the client on uh, the different services, the different packages, the different ways you can get them the end result, and you know breaking down the pros and cons of that um, really really important. It's um, yeah. It, it's been said and, and you know, it, with my experience as well, I, it, it really feels like the, the better a client is educated on what you can do for them and yeah. what everything means. Because we have to remember as well, whatever industry we're in, we have our own uh, slang and nomenclature and whatnot. And, and it's, uh, it happens nine times out of 10, you just end up speaking in this way, which is almost speaking in tongues to your clients. And they're taking in something and you mean something differently. And so then you get, you know, halfway through the consulting gig and, and, you know, your expectations are not aligned. So a right. uh, well-educated client on what they're buying from you and what the end result is and what your process is like and what everything means is probably one of the best things you can do to have a successful engagement. Yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, again, I think there's a couple of aspects to that. You know, I think at the end of the day, um, the kind of dollars for hours, the direct exchange for, you know, $100 for one session, uh, you quickly as a solopreneur get maxed out that way. There's, there's yeah. very little leverage in a true dollar for hours I I exchange unless you're operating at a very, very premium rate. But even at that premium rate, you're still going to hit a cap of dollars for hours. So the, the packaging helps you move out of that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, okay, so it, the, the math is there's only so many hours in the day. So there's, you know, you cap out at the math on that side. But also as well, uh, what people seem to 
forget is uh, billing hourly actually penalizes um, someone who is working to be better. So mm -hmm. whether it's someone you're working with that you hire to execute on uh, the delivery of your, your programs, whether it's yourself that it's just getting better and better as you, you know, continue your professional development, the amount of value you can put into that hour just gets more and more. And, uh, typically you can work faster or you can come to a problem resolution faster, or you can make better introductions to other partners, other people that can help out with the situation. Um, and, and you just end up getting penalized for working better and faster on an hourly rate. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, not a fan. Yeah, it's, it's certainly uh, filled with a lot of issues. And, you know, I, I think the other thing I wanted to touch on that you spoke about earlier, and, and this is what a package solution allows you to do. When you're doing one-off sessions, no matter how many questions you've asked uh, out of the gate, um, that first session that you ever do with a client is really about building relationship, building trust, educating the client on your process, you being more educated on their process or their business. And if you are not giving yourself any space to build that relationship, again, you, I just feel you're not giving your client um, the most value. I feel in a package solution, you have more touch points and more opportunity to build that relationship over time. And again, it comes back to me is you're able to offer a much better solution to, to your client. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so then you're, you're let me ask you, uh, sorry, let me ask you a quick question. So have you ever had an example or an experience where you're working in packages, but your client has still wanted to cherry pick um, bits and pieces and, and put them in? And, and if you have had that experience, how did you manage that? Uh, yes. And um, w well, maybe we can go back to uh, just l let me tell you something that's on my mind about um, from my customer point of view, uh, the packages feeling like, well, I don't necessarily fit in a box. How, you know, can we talk about that after I answer your question? Of course. Okay. Okay. Because we, we want to make sure that the client feels um, that their situation, their industry, their company is, is special and right. that a package can be tailored to them. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that they're getting the one on done, the thing that works for, uh, you know, the, the accountant and it works for the mechanic down the street and it works for the big IT company and it'll work for you. I mean, that's, right. uh, that's, uh, that's something I, I want to go over because we got to make sure that the, the client feels special and that what is going to go on with them is, is really going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, when you asked about um, having certain packages or programs, you can call them anything you like. Um, so we would have certain packages and the client would choose one and then always want to choose just one or two things from a higher level, a higher level package. Um, and it, it, uh, for, as a, as a business owner, uh, the whole reason that the packages were developed is because all of these elements work together at a certain price point to give you the best value. Um, when clients start to cherry pick off, it, it does two things. Um, one, it may be having a product that is um, not appropriate for them. So let me give you a, maybe a concrete example. They bought a Honda and they want a Ferrari engine in it. So it's kind of like, it's, it's not going to be appropriate for what you need, even though it sounds like it's really great. So right. there, there can be some of that, right? Uh, one of the examples might be reaching into market, uh, marketing automation uh, when they're really only dealing with the list of 200, 250 and they're just, you know, in the second year of business and they don't have a full understanding of how marketing automation can help them. So they're, they're choosing to pick software that is hundreds of dollars a month and takes, you know, a department of people to feed it just because they heard, you know, I, I want to get with the times and I want to have that kind of feature. So right. again, it goes back to the educating for sure. And just really letting them know why that, uh, that product or service that they're cherry picking from another package may not fit them at this time. Mm -hmm. um, there is, um, there, there is, of course, it, it goes on a case by case basis and it really, 
it, it does come down to, so, you know, if we've got the Honda car with the Ferrari engine, some things just aren't going to work. You know, you're just not there yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there can be that conversation. Um, the other one could be that, you know, they just want a certain thing. They just want one more blog a month. They just want a choice of a few more images. And it feels like, you know, to bend and to provide that for them, um, it's just going to make them happy and make the engagement smoother. So mm -hmm. it has happened. It's on a case by case basis. And, um, and it is, it, that's the kind of thing you got to be able to understand where the client's coming from, why they're asking for it. Uh, that's another good thing to, to understand. Is it that you've heard that this certain product or service is the thing to have and that's why you're asking for it or you really understand how it's going to help you? Um, right. Being in marketing, it's really interesting how um, it's such a, marketing and advertising is such a visible industry. Um, so clients come much more educated um, uh, to, to asking for certain things that they have heard about. They might talk about lead generation and not fully understand what that really means, but, but they want it. So yeah. back we go to education around, you know, what it actually means. How is it really going to help your business? Perhaps there's something else that we could um, add into the program or introduce at a certain stage that would get them the result that they think they want. Mm -hmm. So I, I wish it was a cut and dried package kind of answer for you. Um, yeah, it does happen. And, uh, and we, we deal with it on a case by case basis. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice. And, and, um, you know, I think the key is making sure that whatever the outcome, whatever you're offering them fits their outcome and is at the right stage of business. And, you know, we're going to address their making your clients feel special. And I'll tell you a little bit about um, how I work with clients in bringing my packages together. So typically what I have for my private consulting clients is I have 10 different pieces that I might work with them, them with. Um, it might be a process. It might be a strategy. It might be in a team building solution. It could be a communication um, piece. It could be a leadership piece all manner of things. I don't just say everybody needs these 10 things, right? Because some people might not have a team. Some people might have a team. Some people's team might be engaged. Some people might not. And you get the idea. So what I, what I do, what I, what is really standard is I know that typically there are five or six so it will take typically five or six sessions or 10, depending, but you know, there's, there's sort of a rule of thumb. There's usually about six sessions of working with people that gets them to the result they need to get. So even though I might not put all 10 of those things in, I usually would start with someone for about six sessions together. It's a great way for people not to have to get married right away, but it's a great way for them to get familiar with me and my style. We see if it's a good fit and they are immediately seeing some outcomes after those six sessions. If they want to move on from that, they can. But the, the package is absolutely tailored to what their specific need is. In, in addition to that, sometimes the client will think they need only three things. Um, but when I'm looking at the bigger picture, I'm able to see some of the other components that I might add into their package because sometimes those other pieces, and for example, a strategy might be a perfect thing. They might say, well, I just need help team building, but actually they don't have a strategy. So they're not able to communicate to their team what their vision is, what they're working to. And of course the team is not going to be engaged. So they might not understand that or see that immediately for themselves. Um, and so I will bring in those elements that you know, address the underlying root cause and then we then we can get to a solution with some of the other more obvious components that they would feel as a kind of like an external pain that that's uh, the result of those foundations not being in place. Absolutely. Oh, that's good. That's good. With us, um, we have, um, I guess, set or a framework of packages. Um, but it really, it, it's, it's interesting because um, with marketing, we, we're working with uh, the, the business, we're working with the marketing strategy. But I mean, these days, like it or not, you're really working with, you know, the algorithms and the robots on, uh, on the internet in order to help things move along. And there's just certain 
cer certain um, processes and certain things you need to do if you want to be out there promoting your business and showing your expertise. So we've got, uh, I, I always talk about it being, you know, we're going to address your audience, but we're also going to address the robots too, because, you know, if you're going to be online, both have to be working together really right. well. I mean, humans first, but you know, the algorithms and all that do, do make a difference. So there's a lot of education around that. Um, what we typically do is just really, what's your business? What, what are you doing? What are you most frustrated about? Who's your competition? Who is really going for it? Who's, you know, who's a thorn in your side? Yeah. What are you trying to achieve? And through hearing um, what they're trying to get to and what they've tried in the past, Mm -hmm. uh, we can get a good sense of uh, which kind of package offering we can direct them towards. And then we can build out that package based on where they're at. So for example, um, are they, you know, they're really bought into marketing and, but they haven't been able to get a, anything done about it or they're at the one-on-one level and really not sure how it can help them. Um, so it really, it really does depend what their story is, what they're coming to us for and how involved they want to be as well. And that would de 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 depend on how, uh, how we structured the package to work for them. If they want to be really involved, uh, absolutely. That's a, a different type of package than I want to be hands off, you know, talk to me once a month with the updates, run everything as if you're my marketing department, you've got, you know, full decision-making power on that. So um, that's where it gets, uh, I guess that's where the tailoring or the, the spokeness comes in to, to all the packages. Cause we really have to understand, um, what's working for you as well as where do you want your business to go? Because we don't, um, we don't have the, the, the marketing strategy and the, and the marketing um, campaigns working in a silo. They really have to support the business goals and then that's how they can really see, oh, okay, marketing is working for our business. And we just don't get that unless we have the first conversation about, you know, what is it you're trying to do with your company? Where are you trying to take it? What's, what's, uh, what's really irking you in, um, in your industry right now? And then, that's how we end up building out something very tailored for the client. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, Jen, we're at um, the 30 minute mark and I think we've had a good uh, conversation today about the pros of having a package and the challenges and how to still keep those packages feeling fresh and tailored to your clients. Um, and hopefully that's been helpful to some people out there that are wondering if that's the right way for them to move ahead. So just to wrap up, um, any final comments, uh, anything that's coming up for you or how can people get in contact with you if they need some help with their marketing? Any final comments? Um, the, the packages work best for the business owner and for the client. It really, it really is a, makes it easier to choose what you want to do and it gives a lot of value rather than you know, buying everything separately. And there's some things that will be in a package that you didn't even know you needed. Uh, just because uh, we can't know everything about every single business. Absolutely. Yeah, perfect. So uh, final thoughts on that. I have to tell you, Natasha, these 30 minutes go really fast every time we meet. <laughs> I know, they do, they do. <laughs> having a great time. Uh, <laughs> folks, get in touch with me at either jen at nimblequotes.com. That is our Twitter uh, service that posts inspirational quotes to your Twitter feed, as if you've tweeted them yourself. Great way to break the ice and get started on conversations on Twitter with your audience. Or at Jen at newinitiativesmarketing.com. That's the marketing company. And we'd be happy to learn more about your business and see if we're a good fit to help you. Perfect. Thank you. And if anyone's needing some help as they are building and growing their business, uh, you can contact me at info at inspireanddrive.com. Check me out on the website at www.inspireanddrive.com. Um, we would love you to comment, like, share these, uh, these chats that we're having if you're enjoying them and like our Facebook pages, that is really helpful. And just as something fun that I'm doing over the next few weeks, if anyone wants to join in, you can find them on my Facebook page, but I am running a 30 day, uh, it's my own video challenge, you don't have to do any work, but every day for 30 days, I'm sharing a two minute video uh, with a tip or advice on 
how to grow your business, make more money while actually working less. So if you want to find out how to do that, you can join in and uh, check out my two minute videos for the next 30 days. So we'd love to have you part of that as well. Great. Good. Okay. Thanks for your time, Natasha. Thanks. Great to see you. And we'll talk to you next week, Jen. Bye. Sounds good. Bye.